9 to 12 minutes. Download this resource for free. Commentaries on the Laws of England, 1765 to 1769. Sir William Blackstone. Book 1, Chapter 6 of the King's Duties. I proceed next to the duties, incumbent on the King by our Constitution, in consideration of which duties his dignity and prerogative are established by the laws of the land, it being a maxim in the law that protection and subjection are reciprocal. Point 1 and these reciprocal duties are what, I apprehend, were meant by the Convention in 1688, when they declared that King James had broken the original contract between King and people. But however, as the terms of that original contract were in some measure disputed, being alleged to exist principally in theory, and to be only deducible by reason and the rules of natural law, in which deduction different understandings might very considerably differ, it was, after the revolution, judged proper to declare these duties expressly, and to reduce that contract to a plain certainty. So that, whatever doubts might be formerly raised by weak and scrupulous minds about the existence of such an original contract, they must now entirely cease, especially with regard to every prince, who has reigned since the year 1688. The principal duty of the king is, to govern his people according to law. NEC Regibus Infinita AUT Libera Potestas kingly power is neither free nor unlimited, was the constitution of our German ancestors on the continent. Point two, and this is not only consonant to the principles of nature, of liberty, of reason, and of society, but has always been esteemed an express part of the common law of England, even when prerogative was at the highest. The king, says Bracton III who wrote under Henry III, ought not to be subject to man, but to God, and to the law, for the law makes the king. Let the king therefore render to the law, what the law has invested in him with regard to others, dominion, and power, for he is not truly king, where will and pleasure rules, and not the law. And again, for the king also has a superior, namely God, and also the law, by which he was made a king. Thus Bracton, and Fortescue also five having first well distinguished between a monarchy absolutely and despotically regal, which is introduced by conquest and violence, and a political or civil monarchy, which arises from mutual consent, of which last species he asserts the government of England to be, immediately lays it down as a principle, that the king of England must rule his people according to the decrees of the laws thereof, insomuch that he is bound by an oath at his coronation to the observance and keeping of his own laws. But, to obviate all doubts and difficulties concerning this matter, it is expressly declared by Statute 12 and 13 W3. C2. That the laws of England are the birthright of the people thereof, and all the kings and queens who shall ascend the throne of this realm ought to administer the government of the same according to the said laws, and all their officers and ministers ought to serve them respectively according to the same, and therefore all the laws and statutes of this realm, for securing the established religion, and the rights and liberties of the people thereof, and all other laws and statutes of the same. Now in force, are by His Majesty, by and with the advice and consent of the Lord's spiritual and temporal and commons, and by authority of the same, ratified and confirmed accordingly. And, as to the terms of the original contract between king and people, there I apprehend to be now couched in the coronation oath, which by the statute 1 W and MST 1. C6 is to be administered to every king and queen, who shall succeed to the imperial crown of these realms, by one of the archbishops or bishops of the realm, in the presence of all the people, who on their parts do reciprocally take the oath of allegiance to the crown. This coronation oath is conceived in the following terms. The archbishop or 